I'm eating bad food, chips all day from morning till evening, what doctor's pill will do it? So is the case with breathing. Doctor can help you only when you tell doctor, I am committing this mistake. Swami can help you when you say, I have this habit. These three exercises are very important for you to do. All other exercises are meant to regulate the motion of lungs, prepare your breath, not to disturb your mind. If breath is harmonious, mind is not disturbed. If breath is perfectly harmonious, the mind remains in a joy. Have you heard the word dichiademy? There are two sides of the moon. One is bright side, one is dark side. But there is another thing. That is called trichiademy, like a fork. The trichiademy does not oppose the academy. See, those three aspects should be together. Breath, harmonious breath, conscious mind, calming, learning to calm down, conscious mind, and learning to allow to come forward from the unconscious mind. They are linked. This whole process, they cannot be separated. They are not different. You are prepared physically, body is still, and the breath is calm. For a few days, please, don't do any mantra, don't do anything. You will enjoy. You will enjoy. Physical stillness, you will enjoy muscle. Relax muscle. You see. Breath, harmonious breath, you will enjoy nervous system. And both muscles are very healthy. If you really want to enjoy your health, which you don't, when you are doing exercises there, I ask, what are you thinking? I am thinking of my girlfriend. This is not the time to think of your girlfriend. You are doing exercise, pay attention towards your exercise. If you train your mind to think what you are doing, you have done. So you have formed a habit. You think you are here? I don't see you, you are not here. Your minds are somewhere else. And when you are somewhere else, you are here actually. Why? Because you never care to train your minds. This process is going to help you. These three exercises are most profound exercises which will help you. Suppose you are a therapist. A doctor, a psychologist, a psychiatrist. Patient comes crying. Don't tell her that you are going to introduce a yoga exercise, a pranayama, no. Tell her to relax. Just teach her. Deep but diaphragmatic breath. It will help. Teach her. Two to one exercise. It will hundred percent. These exercises have been proved very helpful. Scientifically. So I'm not afraid of explaining to you scientifically. I don't care. If you challenge me, come on. Let's go to the lab and get them examined. They will come correct. Advanced exercises at Kathopanisha says, lower arni or upper arni. Apana and prana. Up, they say. Prana, prana, gati, ruddha, prana, yam, parayana. Though nobody understands the meanings of it. The master says, prana and apana, this is prana. That is inhalation. Apana is exhalation. How do you join them together? How do you make these arnis together and create a fire? Because prana is a fire. Breath is a fire. How do you do that? By not allowing any pause. 
then you control the past. If you have controlled the past, you have controlled the death. Death can never come to your door if you know pranayama. Okay, you come. And I will not create the pause. Which way will you come and take me? Death will snatch your body when you have created the pause. There is no chance for death to come in if there is no pause. So pranayama means having control over the pause. That is the purpose of Winning, controlling the death. Death, in the progress of growth, the final stage is death. It's not a bad thing. But if you are not prepared, it's very bad. You see. So when you understand the mysteries of death, by understanding that moment when body separates from breath doesn't function, body separates, this unit, breathing, conscious mind, this particular unit separates from another unit, that's called death. Death means separation, not complete annihilation. Yogi dies every day consciously and comes back. That practice is taught to us every day. Two practices in the monastery are taught. Urdharetas. Now, you say Urdharetas becomes impotent, then he cannot, you see, get married and have children? No. It means then he has complete control over. He will not have nightmare. He will never see a woman in the dream. He will never run around like a stupid fellow. Whatever he does, he does consciously. He has complete control over ejaculation. That's the point. Both women and men. This is meant so that energy, the flow of energy, is completely utilized instead of wasted. My master told me one day that whole world thinks that sexual union is the greatest of joy. He said, I agree, but if you take out sex and say union is the greatest joy, I agree, he told me. Sexual union gives a glimpse of joy, but that glimpse does not expand. For expansion of that glimpse, you are here, you search. Search comes, you want to keep the joy for ever and ever, perennial joy. But it doesn't happen. Why? You are searching things at a wrong place. You are churning the sand and you want to take oil out of it. Not possible, it's not there. That permanent joy, that perfect joy, that everlasting joy is not there in physical union. It's only glimpse. So he, he told one thing to the always swamis, you know. He said that why whole world finds great joy? Why man finds great joy when he ejaculates or discharges? Everyone kept quiet. He said, Come on, we all are swamis, you should know everything. You should have all the knowledge, profound knowledge. If somebody householder asks you this question, if you cannot answer, it's very bad for you. I was sitting quietly. I was only 18 years of age. I did not know what he was talking. Because I only knew about women at the age of 28. First time I saw nude picture at the age of 28. And when I saw, I was shocked. And then I looked at it. <laughs> you, know, I, you know, I did not know anything. I am telling you truthfully. <laughs> then I took it to my master. She said, you stupid, I am not your classmate, I am not your friend. Get out of this place. Because he was the best friend to me. I miss him only for only one reason. I could talk to him anything and everything. I could give him bad names, I could laugh, I could hug him, I could kiss him. She said, talk to him any subject. What's possible and the best possible. And that situation, I, since then I am lonely in a way, you know. But my master told me, look at those Himalayan mountain peaks. All the peaks are lonely. Enjoy that. 
If you learn to enjoy your loneliness, you are never lonely.